and welcome to another episode of the Highway Ghost. Tonight I'm in Augusta, Georgia for Peter Echo's American Dime Museum event, the grandest reveal of the world's first two-headed T-Rex. There's going to be sideshow, there's going to be freaks, there's going to be some pretty strange stuff. So join the Highway Ghost for another strange travel. Here's the new uh, poster for the two-headed T-Rex. Super cool. If you guys are not familiar with dime museums, I have um, some videos on my page in the oddities and roadside attractions playlist. Um, I visited Peter Echo's museum a few years ago before the remodel. But you should check out that video, and also I have a story time with Peter Echo explaining the history of dime museums, P.T. Barnum and the circus, and how that oddities and Ripley's kind of evolved into this form of entertainment. So check those out as well here at the channel. But yeah, it's just a really, really cool spot. If you're in Augusta, Georgia, I highly recommend it. I've known them for quite a few years. And yeah, it's, it's something, if you like unusual stuff, Definitely, definitely come here and check it out. Some cool folks. Usually the museum is open, but tonight is a special event. But if you want to take a peek at what it's all about, I do have an older video from here. First time I came here, I thought it was called Pexos, P-E-X-C-H-O-S. But it's actually a combination of his name, is what he told me, Peter Echo. And they're giving out these to the special VIP so I'll be getting one of these posters autographed by all the performers the sideshow folks and Mr. Peter Echo himself Red Stewart's also here a legendary sword swallower and performer so there's going to be uh, a lot to see tonight so check this video out it's really fun wow that's cool this is the two headed T-Rex that Peter Echo and the folks built. Wow. I think he said it was 12 and a half foot tall and 40 feet in length. And this is so cool. Wow. It's amazing. Look at the tail on that. Curls around. It's really cool. Wow. That is really rad the world's first two-headed t-rex welcome to the dime museum <laughs> now we're got, not going to talk about the dime museum this evening we're going to talk about one thing and one thing only a dinosaur two-headed t-rex yes how does one come about Am I bothering you? <laughs> How does one come about making a two-headed T-Rex or finding a two-headed T-Rex? Today is the last day I will talk about this. I will never say this again. I will only talk about this to my friends. That is it. <laughs> this is the world's largest gaff ever made in the history of mankind period. No one has ever made a bigger gaff than this. It doesn't exist until now. And for it to become a gaff, I have to sell it as if it's real. You cannot know how it was made or how it came about. So starting tomorrow morning is when it becomes the world's largest gaff. So I asked my children, I said, what dinosaur skull do we want? And of course, Billy's like, Dad, we need T-Rex, T-Rex, T-Rex. And he's like, yeah, well, maybe. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Uh -huh. <laughs> Triceratops. So I was like, yeah, we could swing that. And I started researching it and finding one. So we can buy that. So then months go by. And it's four and a half feet long for a skull. Where do we put that in our museum? Right? We are, if you've ever been on a tour, we are slam packed with artifacts. There's over 600 pieces on display. So where do we put a four and a half foot long skull? 
So I said, well, what does the body cost? Because now all I have is the ground, two legs, and everything's in the sky, all right? Now you can only go to nine other museums on the face of the earth and see a T-Rex. Only nine. I don't want to be the tenth. I want to be the first. But I can't be the first because I have to go back to 1908 when that was first displayed in the Smithsonian. As a matter of fact, that skeleton is the exact model the Smithsonian had up till 2018, period. And then they change it out for the one that they have now. Obviously minus the head and neck. Now I ordered, you know, the thing and I was like, ah, well, I don't want to do that. What does it cost for an extra head? And they pretty much threw that in. Because <laughs> uh -huh. they thought it was going to sit in the lobby and display because the other piece, you know. But I did not order the spine because I didn't want to tip them off on what I was doing. I wanted to be the first one to make a two-headed T-Rex. Not some company over in Asia and put it in a catalog for someone to possibly purchase it. So what we did, Billy, Thea, Jack, and Aiden, they're the ones that are here in town. I have eight children running around on the planet Earth. I know, not enough, right? My last wife, wherever she may be in here, she grounded me from having kids right here. She said, you've got enough, you've done it already. So, all of my babies have learned how to weld from three years old. Yes, all of my babies have learned how to fabricate since three years old. All of my babies learned how to sew since three years old. All of that in there we did together as a team. We created that spine. Each piece of that spine takes a minimum of 10 hours to make without paint. Not 10 hours at the same time. No, each piece is a 10 hour. You have to babysit it. It is a very long process. Actually, one week less than a year is what it took to make that. So. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do right now is we're going to, our VIP has seen it, yes? Mm -hmm. Front rows have seen it? No. Yes, no, maybe? No. Okay, no. so from the folks that have not seen it in VIP, we're going to swing out right now and file out and go into and see the piece itself. And then after that, we'll get on with the festive. So we do thank you guys for coming this evening. But yeah, folks, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. My name is the Lizard Man. And I, thank you, I, I, I like getting it for free without even doing anything up front. That's nice. Uh, my reputation precedes me. Fantastic. That's right. I am the Lizard Man. And as you should be able to tell, I am a freak. Yeah, just like it says on my chest. That's a little something for the readers. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> but I was not born a freak. No, 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 no. I was born tragically normal. Yeah, like some of you. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. I'm sure you're all very cool in your own way. <laughs> yeah. But I was. I was. I was born normal on the outside. So I had a lot of work done to make my outside reflect my inside. And I know that just looking at me, you start to have questions. Well, I'm going to show you my psychic powers right now. I'm going to answer a whole bunch of your questions without you even having to say them as I tell you about the journey I went on to become the whatever the hell I am that you're looking at here tonight on stage. It all starts with my tattoo. That's right. A little bit of advice. If you're going to get tattooed, do what I do. Don't overdo it. <laughs> Stick with one. <laughs> it is one tattoo. It took over 600 hours to complete over the course of 25 years. And it covers me from top to bottom, head to toe, face included. But a lot of you aren't looking at my face right now, are you? <laughs> now, I see your eyes dropped. It's a perfectly natural question. I get it. I'm going to point this out right Look, the googly eyes are up here, not down here, all right? <laughs> Now notice the ridges over my eyes. They were created by having Teflon surgically implanted onto my skull. It was a six hour operation that was done without anesthetic. It's the only time in my life that I have both hallucinated and vomited from pain. It's a good times, good times. Get you some implants. <laughs> 
Next thing I'm going to point out to you guys are my teeth. I had my teeth filed down with a dentist drill into sharp points. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, actually, you guys react a lot. Of, usually people don't react to the teeth much at all. And I, I don't care. That's all right. They're for me. I, I love my teeth, but other people don't usually care. But the reason that I'm known as the lizard man is my tongue. Or I should say my tongues, plural. Because I may only have one tattoo, but I have two tongues. Check it out. Oh. Hell yeah! My wife told me what she calls it. <laughs> this one is the oh my god. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. We are gonna have came here tonight knowing what a historic night that you are about to bear witness to. We have got an entire spectrum of performance. We have a cavalcade of human curiosities awaiting you guys throughout the rest of this night. And right now, to bring up your first sideshow performer of the evening, we have got a man like you've never met. You've never even heard of people like the man you're about to see before. He is one of the last living Silver Age performers in the world. He has been doing this longer than most of us in this building have been alive. He is a living legend. Ladies and gentlemen, please start putting your hands together. Start stomping your feet. Start making a bunch of noise as we bring him to the stage. He is the one and only. Peter Acko and the American Non Museum, as well as the great reveal of our two headed T Rex. How did you all like our two? You guys need to come in and see the museum later on after we get it put back together again. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to give you a small demonstration of what you might have seen inside of a dime museum as a live entertainment. Now obviously I've been in the industry going on 58 years come this March. Yeah. It is March. And I, yeah, well, <laughs> later on, on March 24th, I am the oldest sideshow entertainer that still performs. I am the oldest sports caller that still performs. I'm going to give you people a small demonstration of what I'm actually world famous for. I've been swallowing swords for almost 58 years now. I've taught more people this ancient art form than any other person in recorded history. I taught 59, as well as being a nine-time world record holder in the ancient art of sword swallowing. Two for fire manipulation and one for the blockhead. I know, I know. Don't mind me. Shut up, Fred. Get back to hell. Yeah. Yes, I do talk to myself. I answer myself too. Sometimes I get in some hellacious arguments. What I hate is when I lose the argument. Yeah, it's that kind of, I'm that kind of a person. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, the first art I'm going to swallow for you today is a small one right here. <laughs> this here is called a Tai Chi sword, or a Kung Fu broadsword. It's 30 inches in length. It's well over an inch wide and eighth of an inch thick. It weighs about uh, two and a half pounds. It's done like this. The fastest way to fire an India system. I don't recommend it. Now, 
most sword swallowers will swallow something small like this here. This here is a U.S. Navy World War I officer's sword. It's 28 inches long. It's about three quarters of an inch wide, up against one inch and in a quarter. And it weighs about two pounds. Now this is a parade sword or a ceremonial sword doing all those weird things. But I gotta be careful because my throat is so large, I can't go down the wrong tube. Let's see if I can do it this time. Of all the sword swallowing has been done for over 5,000 years of recorded history, 5,267 to be exact, actually it wasn't written. It was carved in the temple walls of ancient India as a medical procedure that could be used for something as simple as food poisoning or gastrointestinal bleeding. But to this day, mankind still swears up and down that it's still a trick. A trick? Yeah. One time I swallowed this damn thing, I swallowed it the wrong way. I got it hooked up on something I had a corpse go and start all over. Oh. Now if you believe that one, I'll tell you another. It tasted better the second time down. Oh. Comedy gets a little better, okay? Bear with me. I'm an <laughs> entertainer, not a comedian. <laughs> I tell you what. Next time you take your kids or grandkids, nephews and nieces off to the carnival circus, stop by one of those souvenir stands, okay? Say, hey kids, you've seen Star Wars, haven't you? Great, because I watch the sword. <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks. <laughs> what stop? The real one, the one in 69. Most people wasn't even around then. <laughs> or at least you were still in diapers, whatever. Yeah. One of the two. Let me slow this thing down here before I OD here. <laughs> oh, look at the pretty colors. Oh, I'm sorry, getting sidetracked again. It's a little slow on it. Okay, just the way I love it. Nice and slow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you all going to be in for a little treat, as well as the rest of the show tonight. We'll be in remembrance of a very fellow friend of mine. His name was Morugan. His was his stage name. His real name was Scott Nelson. Yeah, he passed today oh. of cancer of the brain oh. and the lungs. Oh. So, in doing so. I am going to swallow something and I'm going to have the other sword swallowers that we have present here, which is my 59th person that I taught the art of sword swallowing, Corey Ridge, as well as the great and the illustrious Lizard Man. Come up on the stage and let's share the stage for a mass swallow, a four swall sword swallower. On the the honors because he asked if he could swallow a car axle and I gave him my blessings. Now we are one less of the five people that swallow car axles. So, on three, Morugan, you all ready? Okay, I will try and bow in the process, okay, because this is a little heavier than the pieces you guys got. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like the big. <laughs> Don't worry, girls. We got competition against the best. <laughs> okay, on three. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm going to point to somebody, and that person's going to choose the body part that this is going to go through. <laughs> <laughs> 
Face, arm, or leg? Man. Face. When I was a lot younger and still had teeth, I had the strangest way of picking my teeth. <laughs> I worked from the outside in, right about <coughs> here. Uh, oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah. Arm, leg, or neck? Leg. Uh, sir, what did I wear under the kilt? The socks and shoes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I wore something under it and a skirt to kill me. <laughs> Are your hands warm now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, he never had. Right. Gentlemen, we always seem to have a small problem of our socks falling down our legs like this. So I come up with a new way of using the remedy. What you do is you pull the sock up like so. Hold the sock and the pin at the same time. And then you pin it. Pin it. Oh! Yeah. oh. Yeah. Guarantee that the sock will never come down the leg again. <laughs> Ladies, you can do this with your knee high. <laughs> Only a couple of times before you get a run in the <laughs> now where that stocking runs off to, I haven't figured that one out yet, but give me another 58 years of doing it and I'll figure that one out too. Now, arm or neck? Neck. Gentlemen, here's another one for you. Next time you take the old lady out, or somebody else's old lady, I don't know, old lady. So you might lady. want to take her to a nice little classy little restaurant, you know, the kinds where you have to wear a shirt and tie, where you don't get in. There is a few of those here in town here. What you do, be the talk of the town. Be a man. Yeah. Show up without a shirt. <laughs> but indefinitely wear the tie. <laughs> now this is what they call in Texas guts. <laughs> I'm not from Texas. And that is the ancient art form called the human pincushion. <laughs> But, this is an act called eye socket weightlifting. Yup. Oh so the more observant of you, yep. we'll notice I have here two hooks. One on each hand. So I have two eyeballs. Wow. Yeah, chair will work. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh shit, am I climbing? <laughs> Alright, here we go. Number one in the eye. Oh god. Yes. Yeah. Here we go. You all know how you get pink eye? <laughs> Number two in the eye. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you like toilet humor. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. There's no such thing. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. <laughs> you see my finale. <laughs> Uh, okay.
can you see where this is going? Oh, yeah. South. Oh, shit. <laughs> Before we get there, um, do y'all know how to make a party shirt? <laughs> no. It's very easy. You can do it with me. Oh, my God. Reach underneath. Oh, up the top. Pull up. Grab it from the bottom. Woo! Now we're yeah! Gonna... yeah! You make it. Oh, shit. Uh, somebody got a light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come this way. Yeah, yeah fuck it. Let's go. Woo! God, man. <laughs> Weenie roast.
We're uh, yeah, so for, for me for the MC my notes I have two pages. The first page is everything that you've seen so far. Nice. The second page is where things get even more dangerous and exciting. I'm so excited. We're about to start the second page that's with good. a rocket powered minivan outside. Let's go see it. That's right. That's on fire, so that's that's his problem. Um, anyway, he's gonna go rocket to powered minivan. Safety first. Nice. Woo! Yeah. Fire. <laughs> Pick it up, Jerry. Little but mighty. <laughs> yeah. Where we're going, we don't need roads! Going back in time, man. Woo!
Thanks for freaking me out. I love you. Okay, that was Peter Echo's reveal of the world's first two-headed T-Rex at the American Dime Museum in Augusta, Georgia. This night went down in history of the sideshow and roadside attractions as the world's biggest gaff ever created. And I am super, super honored to have been there, to have filmed it and documented this historic event, and to have all of the performers sign my poster as part of the VIP package, and to pick up a copy of Red Stewart's book. Red also included his autographed pitch card that's over 25 years old, being a legendary sideshow performer. Now, if you haven't heard of Red Stewart, check his book out, With It, For It, and Proud Of It. If you can find a copy of it, it's really cool. Now, he signs the back of it, and my copy is number 70 out of 100. The poster here shows Peter Echo's two-headed T-Rex. Have you seen it? And Peter Echo signed it. Red Stewart signed it. The Lizard Man, Eric Sprague, signed it. Hot Todd Lincoln, Andy the Doorbum, Pollyanna Highgloss, Scarlet Storm, and Cutthroat, all of the same freak show named Cutthroat. Freak show. Signed right here is Hella Hayes and Baby Doll, the two strippers of Hella's freak show. Odd Corey, a very interesting performer, very comical, but very talented as well. Now up here is the vagabond himself, Mr. Jack Silvertree. This is Yvette. She was the mermaid aerialist or aerial arts performer. And up here in the corner, straight out of Savannah, Georgia, is the one and only Dead City Circus Sideshow. Now these guys were the ones that were clowns. Very creepy, spooky looking. Very talented. Hatter, Stitches, Necro, and Ignis all signed it. And this is awesome. Right down here is the strongman himself, the Reverend Siv. And he actually gave me a piece of one of the deck of cards that he ripped in half. Here's a bill by the Murderettes signed with a lipstick kiss by one of the drag queens and the bearded lady. Here's the event flyer that Peter Echo put around town, and I happened upon one of these and grabbed it at a restaurant. And also I purchased this Robert Wadlow shoe outline. It tells a lot about the legendary giant. You might have seen him featured at Ripley's Believe It or Not. This is from his museum, according to Peter Echo. And it has all the facts about his life. Last but not least, and probably the most grotesque in the bag here is a sharp nail that was pulled from the nose of Mr. Jack Silvertree by me, the Highway Ghost. He also gave me another stage used nail, but I asked him, I was like, where is this nail from? And he was like, well, the first one he handed me was, he's like, oh, I just used it to hold stuff up. And then he got another nail and he said, I could make another one a little more personal. And he stuck it up his nose and said, here, pull it out. So I pull it out and he licks it off and hands it to me. Probably one of the most grossest things that I've ever had anybody give me. But it's a part of this historic night for the sideshow community and the oddities and roadside attractions community. And I'm glad the highway ghost was there. Take care, thanks for watching, and like always, stay tuned for more Strange Travels.